my friends. Um, from this is my laptop. I'm too lazy to get my camera to charge. I always leave the batteries dead. Fingers crossed this works. Um, I thought it would be kind of fun to do this challenge that's been going around the internet and it's do you have a blank book? And there's a bunch of different unique books you have to try and find on your shelves. This is not the only shelf that I have. I will show you how they're spread around my room. So, I'm gonna set up a working one. We'll see how it goes. So, fun fact, I look like I'm telling you the ghost story if I get that close. The reason I didn't know where they're set up is I have like where to set up in my room because I have a bookshelf here. We turn this way. I have a bookshelf over here. And, fun facts, I also have a bookshelf up there. And, oh, there we go. This is also a bookshelf. Ever since I Marie kondo and got rid of a bunch of books though, I don't have books on that shelf. But it's very hard to pick one place to sit when it's asking me to find, search through all of my books. So we're just gonna go with this shelf and hope that all the good books are on there. Wish me luck. Okay, number one. Do you have a book with deckled edges? Yes. Fun fact, didn't know what deckled edges were until I watched a different video where someone found one. Um, this one. Deckled edges are like when it's all chopped up uneven. This is my illustrated version of the Princess Bride. You can't see it because my lighting sucks, but it's fine. Um, I got it as a birthday present from one of my best friends. It is probably one of the favorite books that I ever had. It's gorgeous. I love this movie. This book. Amazing. I have two copies of Princess Bride. Because you can never have more than enough copies of the same book. Number two. Do you have a book with three or more people on the cover? I was worried that was going to take a little longer. Uh, Blame me. Buffy the Vampire Slayer has big Willow and Buffy on the cover. It's three. I'm very glad I decided to do this after I reorganized my bookshelves, and I have no idea where anything is. Three. Do you have a book based on another fictional story? Yes. I love that they're all super conveniently behind me. Red Riding Hood. They made a movie about this book with Amanda Seyfried. It's Red Riding Hood, but it's a werewolf instead. Uh, one thing about this book that frustrated me to no end is the last chapter is not in the book. You had to go online and read it. And I think that's the most annoying thing to pay for a book and not have the entire book in the book. Matter by the movie cover, so here we are. Uh, do you have a book with a title 10 letters long? That is very specific. That also took a lot less time than I thought it was going to. On this ghost, I don't count punctuation of letters. This is a graphic novel actually one of my favorite graphic novels about a teen who accidentally bonds herself to a dead ghost. Highly recommend. I'm very happy with myself. I thought this would be really hard. I was appreciating that everything's on one of my bookshelves and not the other two that are around my room. Otherwise you'd have to watch me climb around everywhere. Do I have a book with a title that starts and ends with the same letter? Good question. Scanned one bookshelf. One bookshelf. Number two. Oh gosh, the lamp is there. This is terrible. I promise I'll be a better filmmaker. I'm gonna be very upset 
This is not a competition, but I'm treating it as one. Okay. Neil Flambe and the Aztec abduction both starts and ends with N. Um, I read all of these books as a kid, and I'm so obsessed with them. I think that they are one of the best written mystery series that I have ever read. I love this lamp, just whiting everything out. It's fine. We'll get there. Okay. Do I have a mass market paperback? I think it's defined as mass market paperback. Is it like any paperback I have? I don't know. I'm confused. Let's look up the definition. Here we go. What is the difference between a paperback and a mass market paperback? Small format paperbacks that are sold at all retailers who carry books. They are cheaper in both quality and price. Hmm. I don't know what we need to find as a mass market paperback. Um, I'm going to use this one because I feel like it's probably been printed a lot of times considering it's a fairly well-renowned series. This is the first book in the Discworld series. Oh my gosh, focus. There we go. The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. I feel like this is defined as a mass market paperback. Yell at me if it isn't. Okay. What is next? Do you have a book written by an author using a pen name? Yes. Okay, I'm not staring off into the distance. There's a bookshelf above this camera. Um, and that's where all my Stephen King novels are. And Stephen King wrote under a pen name, which I think it was either Robert or Richard Bachman, because he was publishing books too fast. And his publisher was like, people can't read these as quickly as you're writing them. So please do something so I can actually sell them. So that's why I'm looking up there, because that's only Stephen King books. So I feel like there should be one. There isn't. Weird. I know Thinner was written under that name, but that was my aunt's book, so I had to give it back. Um. Hmm. Oh. Nineteen eighty-four, which is by George Orwell, and his real name I do not know off the top of my head, so I'm going to cheat and check the liner notes. Well, not liner notes. This isn't a record. Um, Eric Arthur Blair wrote 1984. His pen name was George Orwell. Fun facts. I'll put that away later. Um, do I have a book with a character's name in the title? Of course I do. Uh, that has to be easy. Oh, I already used one of those letters, so that's cheating. Um, Also a classic novel. Picture of Dorian Gray. With the name Dorian Gray in the title. Congrats. That seems very self-explanatory. Number nine. Do I have a book with two maps in it? Two? Maybe? I feel like anything with a map in it has to be fantasy oriented. Again, I love that it just looks like I'm dramatically staring off into the distance when I'm really actually looking at my bookshelf. I just don't have a 360 degree view of my room at all times. Technology's not there yet. Actually, it probably is, but I just don't own it. Only one in the search for one, though, so that doesn't count. I have the Lord of the Rings books. They have maps in it? Maybe? Let's find out. What I'm learning is I need to sort my books in very different ways. Can you imagine if you just had a bookshelf that was only books that have maps in them? That would be pretty good. Okay. There's notes. This one. I'm wondering if it's not like, oh, there's a whole section called maps. 
this has three maps in it. We have a map of the west of Middle Earth at the end of the Third Age. This is probably also mass marked paperback, I just realized that. Yeah. These maps are terribly printed as paperback. I feel like there's definitely like a special edition that has much better maps than this. And three. So that's The Fellowship of the Ring, the first book in the series. I'm curious if they all have maps in them. Yeah, it looks like the same ones. So, any Lord of the Rings book, I guess, has maps in the back of it. Ten. Halfway there. Do I have a book that was turned into a TV show? I most definitely have books that were turned into movies. I'm trying to think of TV shows based off of books right now. Again, not staring into the distance, checking the books on the top shelf. Oh, it's not my book, but where is it? I borrowed it from someone. Is this cheating? Maybe. The Outsider. It's not the newest Stephen King book anymore. I can't keep track. That name writes too fast. But they turned it into a TV show that has Jason Bateman, among various other people in it. I have yet to watch it, but the book was really good. Um, just for curiosity, I wonder if there's any other ones. Three Days in Ham is turned into a TV show that is on Netflix. It's highly recommend. I'm not usually a big fan of Dr. Seuss TV shows, but that one turned out really well. Next, 11. Do I have a book written by someone who's originally famous for something else? Oh, I feel like any biography counts. Um, Standing Tall by Spencer West. He is an inspirational speaker, he is involved with Me to We, and he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro even though he doesn't have legs. And that was all before he wrote this book. I did not have this book with me when I met him. He signed a piece of paper. There's no stuck in this book. And it's from a dog notebook. That is how dedicated I am to getting all my books signed. 11 for 11. 12. Do I have a book with a clock on the cover? I'm very frustrated with myself because like last summer I cleared out a good chunk of my books. Like I just decided I was going to like Marie Kondo and get rid of stuff. And now I'm really wishing I did this challenge before then because I can definitely think of like three books that I had that had clocks on the cover. But now I don't know. Like I'm gonna spend eight hours checking all my books for clocks. I'm gonna say that I don't have a book with a clock in it because I can't currently find one. I used to have a book called The Clockmaker's Apprentice that had a clock on it, but I got rid of it like three months ago. So I had a book, if you want to count it. I don't know. Oh, do I have a poetry book? What a, what a silly question. I have an entire, oh, okay, let's hope this doesn't weigh out. Half of a shell is in all poetry books for this one over. Um, if I want to pick a specific one, I probably pick any of these ones. I'm a big button poetry fan. We have Date and Time by Phil Kay. Helium by Rudy Francisco, and then we have Neil Hilborn's books, The Future, and Our Numbered Days. I saw him perform on St. Patrick's Day, because that's how you spend your St. Patrick's Day watching poetry. You know you're a nerd when St. Patrick's Day is not a day to get drunk, it's a day to go and watch poetry and cry. Do I have a book with an award stamp on it? Yes. The question is which one? Oh, when I checked for a clock, I checked this one. Wrinkle in Time, classic book. I have my hand right over the award sticker. That doesn't help anyone. It won the, I can't even read it, the Newbery Medal. Children's Award. 15. Do I have a book written by an author with the same initials as me? My initials are M.M. And I feel like it's pretty rare. Oh, I did 
do. Sorry, I got really excited. Um, Marissa Mayer. I'm actually, I checked this book for a clock on the title. Kind of sad it doesn't have one. And Cinder, it's like Cinderella, but she's a cyborg and her robot foot falls off. I feel like that's not a spoiler because it's kind of expected in the Cinderella story for her to lose. Not an appendage, but a shoe. Um, but Marissa Mayer is M.M. And I think this book's signed too. I have a lot of signed books. Yeah. Once Upon a Time. It has my name on it too. Ah. Should have bonded with her over that because I am very awkward at author greetings and I never know what to tell people. So that would have been a weird thing to bond about her with. But I'm sure it would have been interesting. Okay. 16. Do I have a book of short stories? I have multiple books of short stories. I know I have Rudyard Kipling's Just So Stories kicking around somewhere, probably up there, it's paperback. Um, but this one's closer. It's Brave New Worlds. Not Brave New World, but it's a collection of dystopian short stories. And to buy it for class this year, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. Plus it looks very posh on the bookshelf. I really like having thick books. I don't know why. Um, do I have a book that's between 500 to 510 pages long. That is incredibly specific. Um, I did it. I don't know if this is cheating because it's a collection, but I'm going to use it. It's Charlotte's Web. Stuart Little and the Trumpet of the Swan, but the collection is 505 pages. Does that count? I don't know. We're bending the rules here. It counts. Everything else I could find was like 475 or like 550. Apparently authors don't like to go within that 500 page rule. I don't know. Do I have a book that was turned into a movie? Yes. I definitely mentioned this when we were talking about TV shows. I have many a book. That was turned into a movie. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Coraline. Coraline is one of the few instances where I think the book is better than, or the movie is better than the book. I just really love Wyborn. Some people hate him. I don't know. But this is the book. I read the graphic novel version before I read the actual novel. I wrote an essay on this this year. Um, Seven Mother is horrifying, but I really loved scary movies as a kid, so I wasn't one of those people that was, like, dramatized by it. Um, and Neil Gaiman, a lot of his books are actually also my favorite movies. I love the book Stardust, also a phenomenal movie. Surprisingly, I don't own that. I think I read it from the library. That should be a real thing. Just go to the library and try and find all these books. They probably get really annoyed at you just sprinting around the floors. That would be fun. Library scavenger hunt. You have like so many time, so much time, and you have to collect like 20 books that fit all these categories. Librarians out there. Free program idea. Do I have a graphic novel? Hmm. Also like poetry. I have, we're just gonna move that out of the way, a graphic novel from the shelf. Um, arguably one of the greatest graphic novels and one of the best novels of all time. Watchmen by Alan Moore. Also, V for Vendetta by Alan Moore, um, and The Killing Joke by Alan Moore. I'm just an Alan Moore fan. But this book is definitely one of my favorites. I read it every once in a while, and I always find something in it that I didn't notice the first time, which is pretty cool. Fun fact! Oh, I could use this book for so many categories. This has also been turned into a TV show and a movie, because they just made an HBO TV show about it that I have yet to watch. They made a movie about it years ago. It was terrible. For any of you who have seen it, seen Night Owl. It was horrendous. And Dr. Manhattan, they feel the need to constantly have him naked for no reason. Read the book. The book is much better. Um, last one. And then we're 20 for 20. Actually, that's a lie because I missed one. I don't remember which one I missed. I'll figure it out when I edit it. Do I have a book written by two or more authors? I'm guessing illustrators don't count. 
I think they should just have, do you have an illustrated book? Maybe that's too easy. I have a whole shelf of picture books. I do have the Dear Evan Hansen novel, and this was written by, I'm going to butcher this name, Val Amich. If anyone knows how to say it better than me, please tell me. Um, but the original score was written by Benj Pask and Jessica Paul, and the book was written by Stephen Levinson. That's for the musical. So because it's based off the musical, they get credit. I feel like that counts because, like, they use lines from the musical verbatim. So I think that's a team, a team effort writing that book. Otherwise, I honestly don't know if I have one. I really want to get the collaboration between Stephen King and Joe Hill because I think that's really good, but I don't, I do not have it. Hmm. This is just making me very aware of things that I don't have, which is bad because now I'm going to want to go out and spend more money to get more books. But anyways, 19 out of 20, not that bad. I'll take it. Let me know down below how many books you have on your shelf and please feel free to follow my blog and give us a follow on Instagram and Goodreads. All that information is at the very, very bottom of the blog if you scroll all the way down.